y'all got happy for that. So, um, and that's okay. That's okay. Because I'm going to say something before I actually get started today. Um, for some of you, it's going to be uncomfortable. What I'm going to talk about today is going to be uncomfortable. Because I'm going to challenge what you know. According to the Bible. <laughs> so for some of you, I'm just going to reveal the basic, the, the truth of what's in the scripture. That's all I'm coming from is the scripture and, and what it says. Because sometimes we all, I'm saying me included, we have been taught some things in our lifetime that we held on to. And then later in life, we discovered it wasn't necessarily like that at all. Okay. Uh, some of you, you know how you felt when you found out about the tooth fairy. You know how you, <laughs> y'all not going to say nothing. Y'all going to lose something eventually. Some of y'all know how you felt when you found out about, you know, who was eating the cookies and the milk on uh, December 24th. It really hurt you. But now you're older and you've heard some things about the truth, what you thought was the truth and factual things. But I'm going to show some things according to the word of God because I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, he, last, year, last week we talked about can you identify him. We talked about him being a person, not a thing, not an it, but he is a person. He is a third part of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We talked about that. We want to continue to, to instruct and push that narrative because it is important that you know he is real. Don't disregard him. Don't act like it's not real. Sometimes we have only associated the Holy Spirit with the, the shucking and the bucking in the church and thinking that's what the Holy Spirit does. He is so much more than that. And I want to make sure that I give you that today. Amen. So we're going to continue on in our series. Uh, I would not have you ignorant is the name of the series. Part one was, can you identify him? Today, we're going to talk about the gifts. The gifts, okay? The gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you don't mind, I'm going to have you stand for one verse, one verse only. Um, we're going to read this one verse together. It is out of the book, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Uh, we're going to read this together, and then uh, you can be seated, and I'm going to talk for you just a little bit. And, but we're going to do some more teaching. Once again, I told you my, my fight, Elder Lisa, was not to try to be exciting. Because sometimes this basic groundwork is, is rough. It's rough. But we're going to get there. Okay, we're going to get there. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 simply says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. The gifts. That's what we're going to talk about today. The gifts. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you that you have blessed us to be in this house once again. I'm asking that you anoint us. Anoint us, Lord God, that we can do what you've called us to do as the way you have appointed us. Lord God, I pray for me. Don't let me waste your time, but give me the unctioning of the Holy Spirit today so I can share it the way that you've poured it into me. And I give you all praise, give you all honor, give you all glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all, how y'all doing? Everybody good? Y'all sure y'all good? Y'all wait? Y'all wait? Amen, amen, amen. I told you, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. It was rough reading it and then learning it and reteaching myself. It was rough. And so don't throw any tomatoes. <laughs> don't, don't. Everything I'm saying, you can go find in the Bible. But I thank God for y'all. Uh, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. I would not have you ignorant. Now, I explained last week that to be ignorant does not mean that we are stupid. Okay? We, let's get that out there. We, that does not mean, if I say we're ignorant about certain things in the Bible, that does not mean that we are stupid. It simply means uh, that we have not been taught in a certain area. So, so what you'll find in today's society is that there's a lot of believers who are ignorant about the Holy Spirit. OK, uh, they have either not been taught about the Holy Spirit or or more than likely they've been taught misinformation about the Holy Spirit. OK, so once again, I want to dig deeper into this uh, uh, text so that we can get the reality of the Holy Spirit uh, and try to inform us and myself included and to clear up some misunderstandings that we may have. All right. Uh, now, our text simply says now concerning. Now, I'm going to do this real quick. I don't usually like doing this, but I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to go down a quick rabbit trail of information. i got to share something with you that I was learning as I begin to study deeper. Uh, now concerning uh, is uh, this particular wording or phrasing or, 
or similar wording is found in 1 Corinthians several times. Now I'm concerning. That, that is found in Corinthians several times because the reason is that Paul actually wrote a letter to the Corinthian church before 1 Corinthians. Okay? So, so what I'm saying is that the book of 1 Corinthians is actually the second Corinthians of 2 Corinthians. That lose y'all? There, there was a letter before 1 Corinthians to the Corinthian church. So the book of 1 Corinthians is actually the second Corinthians. And the third Corinthians is the second Corinthians. And okay, I, I was showing you that. I, and I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up because we don't know what happened to the first letter. Okay? We do not know what happened to the first letter. Uh, but the words now concerning is Paul responding to the Corinthian church uh, letter to him in response to his now lost letter. So now concerning, he's replying back to the Corinthian church because they had wrote him about the letter he had originally wrote to the church. Corey, you're making stuff up. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, Paul says, I wrote to you in my previous letter. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. So he said, I wrote to you before this letter. We later put them in order as we saw fit, uh, the, the, the uh, organizers of the Bible, of the scripture, but there was a letter before 1 Corinthians. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, he said, now concerning the things which you wrote to me. So he's replying to them in their reply to him. Okay? And I believe Paul, it is believed that Paul actually wrote four letters to the Corinthian church. Okay? I just wanted to share that with you because I want to lay a little foundation to our study. So our text says, now concerning spiritual gifts. Now the word spiritual is, is a Greek word for pneumaticos. It's the Greek word pneumaticos. Pneumaticos means it's empowered by breath or wind. On my job, I order parts for uh, machines that have pneumatic cylinders. Pneumatic cylinders mean that they are powered by air. Our scripture then, put in another way, simply says, now concerning the gifts that are empowered by the breath or the wind of God. Let, let, let's flip that. Let's flip that again. Now concerning the gifts that you can only move in if you allow the Holy Spirit to breathe in you. Hmm. That's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. Do you know what I'm saying right now? That's why we sing that song. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, spirit of the Lord. You remember that song? I lift my hand and surrender to your name most high I'm yielding to your spirit that's the song I'm walking in your love then the part I love is this says, Jesus I adore your holy name y'all remember that song? Sing it with me then. Here we go. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me. Breathe upon me. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Let's do this. Let's do this. Lift. I lift. I lift my hand and surrender to your name, Most High. To your name. Woo. I'm yielding to your spirit. I'm walking. I'm walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Can y'all sing that again? Say, Jesus, I adore. Jesus. Come on, y'all sing. Jesus, I adore Jesus. I adore. Come on, feel it, feel it. Say, say Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Come on, somebody open your mouth. Say, Jesus, I adore. Come on, come on. Jesus, I adore. Jesus. Your holy name. Jesus. 
Now it makes sense. Now concerning the gifts that are empowered by the breath or the wind of God. The, the gifts that you can only move in if you allow the Holy Spirit to breathe in you. I'm yielding to your spirit. I'm walking in your love. So let, let's go ahead and get in this because I can stay there for a while. We, I don't have time to do all of these, but now concerning spiritual gifts. We're going to skip down to verse 4. I'm going to be reading out the King James Bible, uh, New King James Bible, uh, uh, and I'm going to really be focusing on verses 7 through 11. I'm going to talk about the nine spiritual gifts. Uh, Pastor Pryor used to hit us with this all the time. I'm doing a recap of what he did, and I'm going to add a little bit more to it, uh, but we're going to go 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. Main focus is going to be chapters, I mean, verses 7 through 11. Um, but the Bible says, it says, it says, there are a diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one. For the prophet, I'm going to substitute the word for the prophet. I'm going to put benefit there because when you see the word prophet, you find about some of them jack leg crooked preachers that tried to make a prophet off the word of God. I call them like I see them. Tim, Elder Tim reminded us of a story yesterday in our men's meeting, which y'all missed. It was a wonderful men's meeting. Man, and we ate like it was a Thanksgiving. <laughs> Raymond put his, woo! Raymond. And these pork chops. I, I okay. I'm not gonna talk about that, man. <laughs> hey, check this out, Raymond. I'm gonna do it real quick. About eight hours later, Corey said, "Dad, did you get some extra pork chops?" I said, "No." He said, "Man, I should have got some of them extra pork chops." <laughs> I said, "Yeah." They walked out the door, and I saw him go. But anyway, 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 anyway. Elder Tim reminded me of a story yesterday where we had a, a national televangelist missionary come to Jackson. She was all that you know who she is. I'm not going to call her by name because supposedly she has changed, but when I see her, it's very hard for me to see the change because she came to Jackson and did, did, didn't even really preach, but she came to Jackson and she, 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 she hit us up with that, that TV stuff. And then she said she got to speak to the Lord to see if she's supposed to come back the next night. We had her for, I think, supposed to be at least two nights. And so the first night, she said she got to talk to the Lord to see if she's supposed to come back the next night. The reason she made the decision not to come back the next night is because the offering the first night wasn't good enough. Oh, and that's not, that's not made up. That's not fallacy. That's a real statement. She was displeased in the amount of offering that she received. And so she said she's not going to come back and preach to us. And that put a nasty taste in my mouth about preachers. Okay? And so I just simply said, we're going to change the word profit here. It's a mean the same thing, but I'm going to say benefit is for the benefit of all. How many of you are each one? You're each one. We are each one, okay? We are each one. Uh, it said for the each one can benefit of, of all. For one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit. Let me stop right there real quick. Uh, the King James Version simply said gifts of healings. With no S, uh, New, J New King James said healings. Different ones say healings. And what that, I had to go find out why they're different things. Why are they changing what the word said? And what I found out is that they, it means the same thing. They just want you to understand it means that you don't only get healed once. Okay? What if you had the gift of healing and you wasted it on a scar on your arm? <laughs> okay? We have the gifts of healings, all right, uh, by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all of these th uh, things, distributing to each one individually, here we go, as he wills. 
That's the part we got to remember there. As he wills. Now, what I discovered is that my father, the Meredith pastor Walter T. Pryor, was and still is ahead of the curve when it comes to teaching about the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. Pastor Pryor, as gifted as he is and as gifted as he was, has yet to claim any one gift. He has yet to claim any one gift. Now, people have tried to attribute certain gifts to him because they have seen him operate in those gifts, but he has never claimed to have any one gift. Okay? And it just didn't make any sense. We've seen you work in faith. We've seen you work in healing. We've seen you work in miracles. And you don't claim that. But Pastor Pryor dared to be himself when everybody else was fighting to be somebody and jealous of the gifts that God has given him, and, and envious of the gift that God has given him, willing to make up a gift so they could be like Pastor Pryor. He chose to be himself, but they were trying to be somebody in the church show. But Pastor Pryor went about his business being led by the Spirit. So here's what I learned down through the years from Pastor Pryor. And through studying to show myself approved unto God as a workman need, need not be ashamed by rightly dividing the word of truth. What I learned, and here we go, the uncomfortable, be ready for it, is that we don't possess any of these gifts. Mm. We don't possess any of these gifts. So don't go around telling people about the gifts that you possess because as a human, you don't possess any of them of being alone. Don't, you don't have to talk to me, because I, I felt just like you felt. We as humans don't possess any of those gifts being alone. If you don't believe me, go and work in the gift that you claim that you got without the power of God behind you. Come on, go work in it. Let me know how it works for you. It's yours. You can turn it on, turn it off when you want to. Let me know how that works for you. It's yours. Okay? Okay? But, but here's the truth. The Holy Spirit has all of the gifts, okay? And he distributes to each one for the benefit of all, for the profit of all. That means you can minister in any particular gift at any particular time that the Holy Spirit allows you to do so. And yes, yes, I'm not ignorant. I know that some people have been known to operate in certain gifts more than other gifts. We, we know that's a true fact, okay? But it doesn't give them the right to claim that this is my gift. You with me still? Okay. That is because, because you can't claim it's your gift because it's not your gift. It's the Holy Spirit's gift. He has all nine gifts, and he manifests those gifts through you. The word manifest means to make known. He makes known uh, through each one as he wills. See, I can't forget that. As he wills uh, for the profit of all. So be careful taking credit for something that does, that's not yours. Okay, okay, let's, let, let's do a breakdown of each of these gifts, all right? Uh, nine manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so the, what I found out when I got ready to do this, I've been working this for a couple of years, is, is that, first of all, most good teachers categorize the gifts into three sections. And I'm trying to be a good teacher today, okay? So I'm going to categorize them into three sections, three categories. The first category is the revelation gifts. The revelation gifts, or also known as the discerning gifts. Those are the word of knowledge, it's the word of wisdom, and it's the discerning of spirits. Those are the revelation gifts. Somebody say revelation. <laughs> it's the revelation gifts, okay? It's the revelation gift. That means that you are able to perceive or recognize something, to have, to reveal, or showing good judgment, to have revelation. Revelation. That's the revelation gift. Okay, those are the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits. Y'all still with me? Okay, so, so, here we go, here we go. Uh, the Bible says, for one is given the word of wisdom. What's the word of wisdom? The word of wisdom is the divine answer or solution to a particular uh, event. The word of wisdom is a divine answer or solution for a particular event. Hebrews 8 and 10 says that God inscribes or engraves his word in our hearts. Okay, uh, God's wisdom is the supernatural intelligence. 
God's wisdom is his secret knowledge. God's wisdom is like a hidden mystery that can only be re revealed by God's spirit. God's wisdom is not the wisdom of the world because the wisdom of God cannot be bought. You cannot have it studied for. You cannot be, have it earned. You have to be revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. There are many highly intelligent men and women all around this globe that have exhaustive knowledge of the world's wisdom but are completely ignorant of God's wisdom his thoughts and his words. Job 32 and 9 says this. It says, great men are not always wise. That's Bible. So the first gift in the category is the word of wisdom. I'm going to fly through these if I can. The next gift is the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is to know something specific, having, uh, uh, know something specific without having learned it by natural means. Let me say that again. The word of knowledge is to know something specific without having learned it by natural means. Okay? Quick example is when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, he said, go tell your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, well, you said that right, sister girl, because you've had five husbands and the one you're with is not yours. <laughs> that, that is the word of knowledge. He knew something that he, no one told him. He knew that. But you say, okay, Corey, Corey, Jesus is Jesus. So Jesus knows everything. I understand that, but let me, let me help you understand. Uh, uh, what you need to remember is that when he came to earth, uh, he laid down his divinity and picked up his humanity. When he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down upon him. Therefore, he only ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this time when he's speaking now, he, the word of knowledge was by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? He was a natural man. That's why God came down and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And then it said the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Okay? So he had to go through what we had to go through in order to connect with us. So he had to use the power of God. So he only did what God told him to do. So that's the, that's the second one. The word of wisdom. Then we talk about the word of knowledge. And the third gift of the revelation gift is the discerning of spirits. I'm saying that on purpose. Discerning of, Spirit. discerning of, Spirit. that's what your Bible says, the discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits means to be made aware of the presence of a demonic spirit. The discerning of spirits means to be made aware of the presence of a demonic spirit. This happened when the little girl was following Paul and the others around uh, possessed and said, these are the men of the most high. But the problem was that she was possessed with a spirit of divinity, or what we know today as fortune teller. She had an evil spirit upon her. Okay? Now, catch this. This is important. What she was saying was absolutely the right thing. These are the men of the most high. But Paul didn't want a witch confirming his ministry. Because they said what they said was right, Elder Till. But Paul said, you sister girl, you can't talk about me. And so he turned around, and, and he knew it was a demonic force, so he turned around and cast the demon out of her because he was discerning spirits. Discerning spirits. Say it again, discerning spirits. Let's talk about this for just a brief moment. This is where I got uncomfortable because I heard things all my life. It's called the discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. One more time. Discerning of spirits. Spirit is not called the gift of discernment. Corey, what's the difference? That's semantics. You're just using words there. Let me show you. There is a difference. I'm about to stir somebody's spirit up right now, but here we go. There is no gift of discernment in the Bible that allows you to judge a person's character. I'm going to say that again. There is no gift of discernment in the Bible that allows you to judge a person's character. No, that ability to judge a person's character is called experience. Yes, 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 you ain't got to say nothing. Check yourself. Because we are supposed to be discerning. You still with me? We are supposed to have our senses trained to discern good and evil. That's scripture. Okay, we, so, so I'm not saying that it's wrong to discern, but claiming that you have the gift of discernment as utilized by the global church today is really just a humanistic gift of criticism. 
It's okay to sit there and talk. Don't say nothing. Just look at me. You're going to be okay. I had to eat this my own self. Okay? There is no gift of discernment. Come on, come on. Because what you're going to find is that people actually are very critical and judgmental about other people. And they think that their own opinion about somebody is uh, God's opinion about that person. And they think that their opinion is, is so great that they try to validate themselves by saying they have the gift of discernment. But I'm trying to show you that this gift is not in the Bible as we, tried to, as we thought we knew it. The Bible says it's the gift of discernment of evil spirits, of spirits. We can discern of spirits, which allows you to know if you have a demonic or evil force coming against you. It allows you to know if you have a demonic or evil force coming against your family. It allows you to know if you have a demonic or evil force coming against your marriage. It allows you to know if you have a demonic or evil force coming against your children. It allows you to know if you have a demonic or evil force coming against your job, against your business, against your home. I can discern a spirit. That's discerning a spirit. It's not for me to say I discern that you, you're not a good person because I don't like the way you dress. I'm discerning, Elder Tim, that you're a man who likes fine clothes because you dress nice. And they call it a gift of discernment. Let me show you a quick example. My family and I, I don't remember what year it was. We went down to a cruise on Nassau, Bahamas on the cruise ship. I don't remember what year it was. 13? 13? We were down to Nassau, Bahamas, and we did the cruise thing, and we got off the boat. And, and if you've been there, you know you get off, and there's all kinds of people trying to sell you all kinds of stuff. They're trying to get you tours and trips and all this kind of stuff. Then they got all these shops. And so we went through the shops and just, just walking around. And just me, my, me and my three, me and my family, my five, my, my five, a group of five. And so we was walking, uh, Javon, I didn't have you with me, you wasn't in the family at the time. So we walking around. And, and, uh, Corey was a freshman in high school, so he's, he's still a little guy, you know. So, so we walking around Bahamas, and we started walking. And I started, and we turned on this one street, started walking. And I started noticing that the, the music began to fade out. It was, and the, the traffic began to thin out. And, and the paint on the buildings began to change. And, yeah. and the road, road got a little bit rough. Yeah. And then they started to have alleys. Yeah. And in those alleys were people sitting around <laughs> on stools. And, and they was in a circle. And I'm walking around with my family. You know, Corey's a male, but he ain't a man. <laughs> come on, y'all, come on. Yeah. And so I'm walking around, Elder Stevens. And I was like, we, we shouldn't be here. And I'm going to tell you, all I discovered that wasn't discernment. That was experience. I seen that movie before. Tourists with money in the pockets. Lost. Wrong turn. And so we quickly turned back to the main street where everybody else was. That was not discernment. That's common sense. They may have been very good people. Don't get me wrong. They may have been very good people. But why tempt them? I've seen that movie many times. You know what I mean? I'm in the Bahamas. By this out, knocked out. Discerning of spirits is I go to a room and everything looks wonderful. The people are nice. The food is looking great. It's smelling good. Everything I see is pleasing to the eye. And the Spirit of the Lord said, you need to leave. Because with my natural eyes, I don't see nothing wrong. But that spirit inside me says, this is not for you. You, 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 you need to leave the situation. Now, you can sit there and argue with him all you want to, but he's trying to give you a heads up that you need to leave because there's something that you're not setting right in your spirit. That's a discerning of spirits. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Because I got to go to the second category. The second, so the first category was the, the, the revelation gifts. It was wisdom, knowledge, and discerning of spirits. The second category is the speaking gifts. The speaking gifts, also known as the, 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 the declarative gifts. Those are prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. Once again, those gifts are prophecy, tongues, Interpretation of tongues. Um, in other words, all three of these gifts use the tongue to speak or to declare. Y'all still with me? 
So, so, so let's talk about prophecy first, okay? Prophecy is a message of encouragement. Yes. I'm going to say this again. Prophecy is a message of encouragement from God through a person, okay? Uh, let me give you the, the, the biblical New Testament definition. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, it says, he who prophesies, this is what they do, speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Period. <laughs> let me read it again. It said, but he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. Period. Public announcement. Public announcement. Public announcement. The Bible never says that prophecy is for correction. Okay. We done got comfortable now. We done. It, they, they ain't saying amen no more. Not nodding your head. Okay. It's okay. Because I got Bible. I didn't write the Bible. The Bible tells me that scripture is for those purposes. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says scripture is for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? So the new, the, the spiritual New Testament gift of prophecy is for encouragement. What I'm trying to tell you is that uh, you can't go get caught up all in your feelings and tell somebody all and put thus says the Lord at the end of it and then call yourself a prophet. Maybe y'all haven't been around church long enough. That's what they used to do. They would tell you what they want to tell you about yourself, and then they say, thus says the Lord. And if that's you, okay, you don't have to say nothing, but if that is you, okay, uh, you better be careful saying, thus says the Lord, if the Lord didn't say. <laughs> but according to the Bible, true prophecy is about edification, exhortation, and comfort. Okay? So, 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 period. So, so what happens is oftentimes people confuse the word of knowledge for prophecy. You don't hear people walk around, I'm a, uh, I'm a knower. Everybody want to be a prophet. But they want to tell some people some stuff. And then think they got the right to tell you some stuff that God didn't say, and they said, thus says the Lord. On the end of it. Okay. Okay, but say this with me, y'all. Concerning spiritual gifts, I will not be ignorant. Say it again. Concerning spiritual gifts, I will not be ignorant. Let's continue. The next is the gift of tongues. Tongues is the message from God. Some people got uncomfortable right now. The, the tongues is the message from God unknown to the person through whom the message comes. Tongues is a message from God in a language unknown to the person through whom the message comes. Okay? Now, it is my plan to focus on that aspect in great detail next week. So I'm going to move quickly through this uh, because next week we're really going to get into it, so you need to come back. All right? So, so I'm going to forgo the in-depth conversation or discussion about tongues today. All right? That okay? That okay? Okay. Okay. The next gift is the interpretation of tongues. The interpretation of tongues, not the translation of tongues. There's a difference. When I thought about this, I thought about my dear brother, Elder Alex Curley. You see him sometimes, he's very bilingual, just like, like, I wish, I wish, I only wish. But you see him sometimes. I'm not going to say he struggles, but he hesitates because he knows what they said here may not translate properly here, so he has to put it in the language that they will understand. Oh, what you're saying is this. Yeah. It's the difference between translation and interpretation. Yeah. Interpretation uh, uh, is, is expressing the thought or the intent of what a person just said. Uh -huh. Translation is word for word. There's a difference. Interpretation is expressing the thought or the intent of what a person has said while translation is word for word. That means that someone can give a short message in tongues and somebody might give a long interpretation of what they just said. 
or vice versa. Someone could give a, a long tongue, and then there comes a short interpretation of what that person just said. And then what you find out to tell them is that those people who are skeptical, they will hear it and say, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. He said something very long, you said something very short. They're not saying the same thing. Therefore, it's not real. That's what they say. But again, it's not word for word. It is interpretation. Interpretation is trying to express the thought or the intent of what a person understood by the Holy Spirit. Do y'all know what I'm saying now? Okay, quick example, quick example. Um, my wife and I, when we get home in the evening and collapse into our chairs of choice, uh, <laughs> yeah, collapse. Uh, uh, generally, I would ask Julie, how was your day? Uh, because for the, on the real, me and Julie may see each other on a regular day for four to five hours of awake time, okay? And people who work know what I'm talking about. Now you're working with your spouse, okay? On a regular day, we see each other awake hours for four to five hours. So, so I say, Julie, how was your day? Which means she has been apart from me for about 10 to 12 hours that she didn't see me last time. She just had to go without me. This, her heart is yearning all day long. <laughs> like, oh, Corey, oh, Corey, where art thou? My. <laughs> Ain't that how you say it? No, no, that's not quite. <laughs> well, why well, ask you, how's your day? So Julie, what she does, she'll give me a, a basically a, a general detail of when she left the house in the morning to her day and all the details, different things. She's very detailed in certain things, very discreet in others, so I don't get, she keeps the anonymity of her clients. I don't know who she's talking about, if she's talking about anybody at all, but she's really telling me how her day went, not how their day went. She told me how her day went, what she had to do, where she had to travel to, how long she was busy, and all this kind of stuff. So, so anyway, that conversation will last about 10 minutes. So her interpretation of the last 10 to 12 hours that she was without the love of her life, <laughs> she interprets it, and gives it to me in 10 minutes, in a nutshell, okay? And if, if I don't want to know, I don't ask. If I don't have the time, I don't ask. But I ask every day because I have the time, okay? Fast forward. My son Corey comes down to Jackson every weekend uh, to help with the ministry, and I thank God for him, and I thank God for my children, all my children, help to make me, if they want to help us go forward. I love him for that. Corey comes home, having, haven't seen us for a week. So over 120 hours, he had to go without seeing his glorious parents. And I said, Corey, I don't yell at him, I said, Corey, how was your week, man? Corey's interpretation of the last 120 plus hours is like this. I said, Corey, how was, how was your week? He goes, did y'all see that? I asked you a question with words. And you went, <laughs> now I got to use my gift to interpret what that means. <laughs> and if that ain't enough, he'll go, would you say other two? Yeah, so, so I know by now that means it's all good. Are uh, you understand what I'm saying? So he interpreted those last week without seeing his lovely father. Here, that was it. And it's consistent. Every week. But every week, how was your week? I'm not mad at it. Because if he starts talking, that means I got to listen. Are y'all still with me? All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. So, so that was the, the uh, declarative gifts, the, the speaking gifts. That was tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. No, 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 no. Yeah, and prophecy. My, my, fat, my, my fault. Uh, and, and, uh, so I want to make sure we got that. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, and, and, uh, and prophecy. Exhortation. You're using your tongue. This is the last category that we just out of here. The last gift is the power gifts. Also known the power gifts. Power. Power. P-O-W-E-R. The power gifts. 
the power gifts are also known as the dynamic gifts. Okay? Uh, those are faith, gifts of healing, and, and gifts of miracles, the working of miracles. Let me say that again, clear it up. Faith, the gifts of healings, and the working of miracles. Those are the dynamic gifts. The word dynamic comes from the word uh, found in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but you shall receive power. I like saying it like that. Power. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit has come on upon you, okay, you shall receive power. Power. That word power in the Greek is dunamis. Some people say dunamis. Dunamis, okay? And it means power, but it means explosive power. It means dynamic power. It's where we get the word dynamite from. Okay? That's to say, so you shall receive dynamite after that you, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay? And, and so, so that you have a, a dynamic witnessing power. So when you're witnessing under the unction of the Holy Spirit, the power just explodes out of you. Are you, are you seeing me now? Are you seeing it? Okay. Okay. Dunamis. Dunamis. So the first gift of the power gifts is the gift of faith. Okay? Faith is a supernatural impartation of belief and confidence for a specific situation. Let me say that again. Faith is a supernatural impartation of belief and confidence for a specific situation. Here we go. Now, I'm not talking about the faith to believe that if I treat you right, oh, Lord, I just believe that you're going to treat me right. That's not faith. If I just do, if I do, ooh, if I, if I go to McDonald's and I order a Big Mac and I give them some money, I believe that they're going to give me my food. That's what they're supposed to do. If you got to utilize faith so that your spouse will come home every night, there's another issue. Who I just believe that they're going to come home back to me. You know what I mean? So, so I'm not talking about that. But when I'm talking about faith, when I'm talking about faith, I'm talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit that is a supernatural impartation of belief and confidence for a specific situation. I mean a divine faith, okay? A divine faith that ensures you deep down in your soul that if you're going through something, that if you're going through a difficult time, that if you're going through a hardship, if you're going through a sickness, if you're going through some trouble, if you're going through a problem, if you're going through, I just know deep down in my soul that everything's going to be all right. It don't make no sense that I believe it, but I just believe it. Everybody else tell me it ain't going to work like that, but I, I, just, I just believe it. That, that's a, that's a div divine impartation of faith. That's the gift of Faith. The second power gift is the gifts of healings. Gifts, plural. Healings, plural. Gifts of healings are the supernatural endowments of divine health. The supernatural investments, endowments of divine health. Emeritus Pastor Pryor tells how that when God called him to preach about faith, not too long afterward, he was stricken with cancer on his kidney and his bladder. And, and at that time, when he was diagnosed, that was basically a death sentence. What was the year? What was the year? 61, 66, 62, 62, so next year would be 60 years? That God said, he said, I'm supposed to preach faith, but I got cancer on my kidney and, and my bladder. Well, the story goes that through the working of the gift of faith, okay, through the workings of the gift of faith, Pastor Pryor refused surgery. Okay? Y'all know the story. Y'all heard it tell many times. And, and, and the supernatural endowment of divine healing took place in his body. So, 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 so he had a gift of faith that I'm not supposed to have surgery in this situation. And the divine healing came upon his body and he got healed immediately right then and right there. Thus, when you talk about Pastor Pryor and you go back through his ministry, you see a bulk of his ministry was based on healing. Based on healing because he got healed. And he just knew that God could do it. Okay? And so many people try to ascribe the gifts of faith on him. And they try to ascribe the gifts of healings to him. Although Pastor Pryor himself never claimed to have any of those gifts for himself. He said, I'm just being used of God. Maybe there's something behind that. Maybe we need to give God his credit. Maybe it's not about me. And look what I did. And look how great I am. Ooh, I prayed and the whole room changed. Ooh, I laid hands on so-and-so and they got delivered. Maybe it's not about you. Maybe it's about God. 
So, now y'all know Pastor Pryor, if you talk to him, he's very deliberate in his teaching when he tells you, don't do what I did unless you're willing to die in the faith. He said, doctors have begun with knowledge and understanding to help you out in your situations. He said, don't do what I did if not unless you're willing to die in the faith. Believing. Because operating in the gifts of faith and operating in the gifts of healing is simply put like this. You know that you know, that you know that you know, that you know that you know that you know, that you know in your knower that you know, that you know. No doubt, I know. That's operating in the gifts of faith and then the gifts of healing. Yeah. And check this out. Even if you know that you know that you know, that doesn't mean that you have a gift that you can go around and have everybody you pray for get healed. That's right. Right. Yeah, that got quiet on me. Yeah, on. That does not mean just because you're operating in the gifts of faith and operating in the gifts of healing, does not mean that everybody you pray for is going to get healed and delivered and set free. Right. Okay? I'm a reality guy because uh, I want to say this. That just doesn't happen. Have y'all heard this thing called COVID-19? Yeah. Yep. Hospitals were overflowing. Where was that dude that had that gift on him to do that? Right. If it was his gift to do that. Right. I'm not saying God can't deliver, but look at all these gifts of healing that God has blessed y'all to still be here through that season. Right. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So the gifts of healing really means that you get healed, and God, that's important to God. Yeah. That's important to God, okay? And, and here's the last one that we're going to go home. And the last one is the working of miracles, yeah. all right? The working of miracles, that is the divine intervention that alters a natural circumstances. Right. Let me say it again. The working of miracles means that that is the divine intervention that alters our natural circumstances, I'm going to ask a question here. I hope you're not ashamed, afraid to uh, uh, witness. How many of you have experienced a miracle in your life before? Yeah, sure. I, I, I don't mind. Keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up. Look around, look around real quick. Just look around real quick. Just look around real quick. You don't have to see who got their hand up, but to see that their hands are up, okay? And if you're online, just push like and like I have, I have, all that kind of stuff. Um, well, I want to let y'all know that I'm a living, breathing, walking, talking, moving miracle, Okay. You can put your hands out. I, 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 I am a walking, talking, living, breathing, moving miracle. And, and with all these witnesses, and yet there are some people who still don't believe in miracles. Did you see that all those hands that was up? There are some people that don't believe y'all. They think you just made up some stuff. Let me, let me show you something. But here at the Oasis of Love, Full Gospel Church, it says that we believe in miracles. We believe in the power of God. Huh. That, that means something. When we come into a room, we know that there's no limitation on God. When, when we come to fellowship and worship together, we believe in miracles. Yeah, there may be some skeptics in the room, but the bulk of us, we believe in miracles. We believe in the power of God. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on. How in the world would God, you ever believe that God stopped doing miracles? Some of you said that was over the Bible times. How in the world would you ever believe that God stopped doing miracles? All these people just had their hand up. But some people say, no, God don't do miracles no more. How would you believe that? How would you let them convince you of that? And you know what God has did in your life. So, 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 because there's no way that God can stop doing miracles. You know why? Because God can't stop being God. That was good. Thank you, Elder Rod. That was good. That was good. God can't stop doing miracles because he can't stop being God. And, and God is a miraculous God, and he did miracles all throughout the Old Testament. He did all miracles all throughout the New Testament. He did miracles all throughout our lives, okay? So why would he ever stop? And I'm done, y'all, because I want to show y'all something, uh, many miracles that people have taken for granted. Let me get this miracle to you. Have you ever been saved before? Anybody ever been saved before? You've been saved? I, got, I, got, I better have more hands than I have miracles. Have you got, you got, you, you've been saved before? Let, let me tell you something. If you've ever been saved before, uh, you've had a miracle in your life. I know you look at it like it's not, but you've had a miracle. Come on, thank y'all. Thank God, thank God for the miracle in your life. Because, because what that means is that you had a supernatural intervention in your life that altered your natural circumstances. 
Come on, come on, raise your hands if you've been saved before. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You were on your way to a burning hell, but love lifted you. Come on, come on. You were on your way to a burning hell, but love changed you. Come on, you were on your way to a burning hell, but love saved you. Come on, you were on your way to a burning hell, but love redirected you. And then now, I thank God for the miracles of my life. I thank God for the miracle of my life, the miracle of salvation. Some of y'all know how crazy you was. And God still saved you. Some of you know what you did the night before you got saved, and God still saved you. Some of you know what you did the hour before you got saved, but God still saved you. And if you're in this room right now, and you realize, you know what, I need, I, I need to be saved. I need it in my life. You know what that is? That's the Holy Spirit trying to work a miracle in your life. <laughs> and I'm done because I want you to understand, I don't want you to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Any believer can move in any of these gifts at any time when the Holy Spirit empowers us to do so. And God is a God that gives his children good gifts. Because the Bible says, it says that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. And the best way to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit is to first receive the perfect gift of Jesus Christ as your Savior. Are you understanding that? Y'all got to bear with me for the next few weeks because I'm, a, I'm, just, I'm just teaching. I'm just teaching. I'm not really preaching. I'm just teaching. I, 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 don't, I, like, I, like, I like teaching, but I want to bring it to y'all because I don't know y'all wouldn't come to me, so I'm going to come to y'all. So, so we just teaching. We just teaching. I'm sorry. It don't have the great climax. I'm sorry. It don't have the... Uh, uh. Amen? Did y'all receive the word today? So maybe you're here and you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe you're online and you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's the perfect way to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. All you got to do is go and, and, and make a confession unto God and say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. I need to be saved. Save me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins. I also believe they put him into a now known borrowed tomb. <laughs> and I also believe that on the third day that he got up with all power in his hand. And for that reason, I'm able to decree and declare that I am saved. Say it again. Say, I am saved. One more time. Say, I am saved. Give God a praise. Now, Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit rests, rules, and abides in the hearts of those who have accepted you. Lord, I'm not looking for the, the, the spirit that, that's only going to make them jump and shout and run around, but Father, give them the power to walk by faith and not by sight. Give them the power to know what's right and what's wrong. Give them the power, Lord God, to operate in all your gifts at any given time. Anoint them today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Maybe you're here with an ailment or an illness in your body or somebody that you know you want to intercess for. Amen. All I'm doing is asking you to stretch your hand towards this altar. I believe that God got great healings for you. I believe that God got great miracles in his life for you. I believe that God's going to do a great thing in your life. I believe that there's a testimony just waiting to come out of your mouth about what God has done for you. Come on, just believe God in the name of Jesus. Lord God, whatever it is, I believe God. Say whatever your problem is and say, I believe God. I believe God's going to heal me. I believe God's going to direct me. I believe God's going to make a miracle in my life. I believe God's going to work it out for me. I believe God's going to open a door. I believe God's going to close a door. I believe God's going to do whatever needs to be done. In the name of Jesus, I believe God. I believe God. Holy Spirit, talk to them right now. Let them know that everything is going to be all right. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. I was talking with my wife the other last night. 
Have a seat, but just a brief second. Just a brief second. I was talking to my wife this, this, this last night, and we have a, a slate of people that want to be baptized. And we're going to do that. And it came to my heart that we're going to do it on Pentecost Sunday. We're going to have church in the, in the morning like we normally do. And then at maybe 2 o'clock that afternoon, we're going to do a baptism here in the church. So if you know somebody that wants to be baptized in this ministry that's not here in this building, I'm not doing a virtual baptism. I don't know how to do a virtual baptism. Come and you'll be, be safe. Come here. The water will be chlorinated. Or, is, that the, is that the name? And warm. And we'll take care of you. Come, come, but we need to know who you are. We need to know who you are. So you need to see my wife. She can sign you up if you are desiring to be baptized. The only requirement we have for you to be baptized is that you have salvation. You know who Jesus is. That, that's the only requirement. Pastor Pryor always makes it be known. He said, water has saved nobody but eight. And that was knowing his family. He said, Pastor Pryor always said, he said, you can go down a dry devil and come up a wet devil. So if you need God in your life, water does not save you, but when you get saved, we're going to take you down in the water and raise you back up. Amen. Which represents the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if you are here, you desire to be baptized, please see my wife immediately after church. We want to get those names so we have an idea how many people we're going to be doing, uh, and then I can get you the information you will need uh, for the baptism. Amen. And I'm, what I'm doing is inviting all of you who are here, you could be a part of that service if you choose to hang out and, 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 and hang out at the service. You know, what we're going to do, we're going to shut service down. We're going to get about 15 minutes to change into the baptism clothes. Okay? You know what I mean? And so they, cause they're going to get wet. We ain't doing the sprinkling. Did y'all see that man? I'm not going to make fun of him, but it was, it was sad. He was standing in a kiddie pool. Y'all see him? And they took two bottles of water. And they squeezed it over his head. And they called it a baptism. Because they're trying to avoid COVID issues. I'm like, but you all up in his face anyway. Let's go down some clean water. Amen. So we're going to do that. And I want all those that are willing to hang out. And we want to just have a glorious time of baptism. Some people, two weeks, two weeks from today, we got, we got people who are telling me that they, they've been baptized when they was a child. But now they're old, they want to make that commitment for themselves, understanding who God is. So we're going to do baptism in two weeks, May 23rd, following the uh, morning service. Amen? God bless you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Pastor Pryor, you got anything? Be blessed, Pastor Pryor says. Amen. Yes, man. DJ, good to see you today. We're glad DJ. DJ's been out for over a year, but she's back in the house today. Make sure y'all say hi to her. You're good. You're good. We're going we gonna to dismiss out of here. I thank God for all of you. We thank God for all of you tuning in to us today and being a part of our services. We love you from the bottom of our heart. We want you to get into our Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, service on prayer call and then Tuesday, Thursday in our Zoom session. We know God's got great things in store for you. Amen. Is it this Saturday, Brother Robert, the food giveaway? This Saturday, the food giveaway here uh, on, uh, at Always in Love. We love to see different faces come out and be a different part to work. The more hands, the easier it is for everybody. Amen. If you've never been a part of it, come and be a part of it. It's not, it's not going to hurt you. It's going to make you better. Amen. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Amen. And my word to you, you guys think you want to say for mo the mother? To all the mothers, once again, happy Mother's Day. Love you from the bottom of my heart. Let's give all our online viewers a big old hand, everybody. My word to you is simply this. Stay safe and stay blessed. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. To all my in-house people,